All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, truly we thank and praise God for blessing us to come to you once again tonight. We thank God for all his abundant blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Truly God is good and his mercy endured forever. <clears throat> so we thank God for just one more opportunity and time to come and to present a word to you tonight. All right, now for the last few nights we have been talking about uh, the distinction between God the Father and Jesus the Son. And so we brought to you the word of God concerning the two of them. And we found out in the word of God that they are distinct. That there is a difference or disparity between God the Father and Jesus the Son. And so we're coming back tonight in light of uh, this same subject. Uh, we're going to ask the question, uh, is there a Son of God in heaven? Is there a Son of God in heaven? Now the reason why we're posing this question or asking this question because uh, we have some internet uh, preachers uh, who are teaching that the Son of God is not in heaven. All right? So they are teaching and preaching that the Son of God uh, did not rise from the dead. He is not in heaven. Um, and that the Father, the Father is in heaven. So they are, they are saying that there is no Son of God. And so we have to come against this because we know that this or that is not the word of God. All right, so we have been we have been talking on that for the last few nights. So tonight we're going to go back to uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. So let's take our Bibles and turn back to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And we're asking the question, is there a Son of God in heaven? In other words, is Jesus Christ in heaven? Or did he die and did not get up? <clears throat> Excuse me. Did he die and did not get up? Or did he die and, and was not resurrected? And no, is no longer sitting in heaven on the right hand of God. Alright, so let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And this is what it says. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. All right, so on last night we talked about the three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And we explained to you that the Father is God the Father, the one true God. Uh, the, uh, the Word is Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost, who is the Comforter. All right, and it says that, and these three are one. All right? And these three are one, and we explain to you that God is plural. When we, when we talk about God, we're talking about we and our, okay, or us. We explain to you uh, those terms, and we showed you in the Bible where those terms were used in reference to God. Um, so um, God is in a plural form because God is three, Father, Word, and Holy Ghost, or Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so we explained that to you <clears throat> on last night, and, and we are talking about it again tonight. So when it says, these three are one. Now, we, I had, uh, you know, one or two people to say, to, uh, uh, you know, send word to me and say, well, you know, you're a false teacher because there are not three gods. Well, I never said that there are three gods. See, that's where you are lying, and that's where you are misleading I never said there, there are three gods or there were three gods. We don't teach that there are three gods. We teach that there is one God but three, uh, three entities. All right? The three, entity, the three entities are identified right here in verse 7. For there are three. Now how, you gonna, how, how are you going to come against the word of God? How are you going to call the word of God a lie? It's right here in the Bible. For there are three that bear record in heaven. In other words, there are three that are, sit, that are in heaven. What three are in heaven? The Father, the Word, Jesus is the Word, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are not three gods, but these three are one God. These three are one, the Bible tells us. All right? Let's understand that, and let's not fight and kick against the Word of God. Let's believe what the Word says. That's the problem we have in the church today. We got too many people want to preach their own thing and their own philosophies as opposed to preaching and teaching the word of the Lord. 
All right, now let's take our Bibles and, and turn to uh, the book of Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 8. Let's go to Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 8. And we're asking the question, is there a Son of God in heaven? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. All right, we already see that uh, John said that there are three. John uh, let us know that Jesus is in heaven. He said there are three in heaven. And he said the Word is there, or Jesus is there. So now let's take our Bibles and go to Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 8. <clears throat> All right, and this is what it says. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto, unto, ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. All right, now this is relating to Jesus Christ. It says, and when, he was, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. All right, two angels stood by them in white apparel. Verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, this same Jesus that you see right now, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have been, as ye, as ye have seen him, Go into heaven. So the same Jesus that you see going up into heaven or taken up into heaven, he's going to come again and return in the same manner, all right, as you see him go into heaven. Let's understand that. All right, so we see that Jesus Christ went back or ascended back up into heaven, all right, and the scriptures tells us numerous of times that he ascended back to heaven and sat on the right hand of of God. And of course, the right hand of God is just another way of saying a place of honor and status. All right. And him as uh, it, 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 that affirms that Jesus has equal status uh, within the Godhead. All right. A place of uh, the right hand of God is a place of honor and status. It, it doesn't necessarily uh, denote that there is a throne there in heaven, now which it could be a throne in heaven, but we know for sure that it does denote power, uh, a place of status and honor. And so Jesus ascended back into heavens where he has equal power or equal status with God the Father, with, with his Father God. All right, let's understand that. <clears throat> so Jesus and God are co-equal in power. All right, they have the same nature. Let's understand that. Um, so uh, let's leave there and go to uh, chapter 2, verse 33. Let's turn a few pages to chapter 2 and look at verse 33. And we're asking the question, is there a Son of God in heaven? So we already see that the Son of God is in heaven. Jesus Christ is in heaven. So all of these false teachers out here and preachers, uh, they are liars. They are lying, uh, telling you that, Jesus is no longer in heaven, uh, but they say only God the Father is in heaven. Uh, that, is a, that is the trick of the enemy. See, if the enemy can get you to believe that, then you are damned. You have no salvation because there is no salvation without Jesus Christ. Unless Jesus died on the cross, shed his pure holy blood on the cross to redeem our corrupt, sinful, wicked souls and blood, uh, there is no salvation. All right? And, and the Bible said we, we would be, we are men of most miserable. Glory to God. And there, you know, we, we have nothing forward to look to uh, uh, at the end of the grave. There is no life beyond the grave if Jesus Christ didn't come and die on the cross. Let's understand that. So we know that he is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He has all power and status or honor and status and power as his Father God. All right, so Acts chapter 2, verse 33, uh, this is what it says. It says, Therefore, being by the right hand 
of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this which we now see and hear. All right, let's look at that again. Let's look at verse 32. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. So we see that Jesus raised up, that God raised up Jesus, and the disciples declared that they are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, being by the right hand of God exalted, Jesus has been exalted, and he's by the right hand of God, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. He had shed forth this which we now see and hear. All right, so we see that the God the Father has exalted Jesus, and he is at the right, he is at his right hand, and we see that Jesus did rise from the dead. So let's understand that there is a Son of God in heaven. We need to turn a deaf ear to these false teachers and preachers that are telling you that the Son of God is not in heaven. All right, and I'm not going to call the person's name tonight, the false preacher who I've been talking about, uh, the false prophet and apostle who I've been talking about that have, that uh, uh, is saying that. All right, I'm not going to call his name tonight, but I just want you to know according to the word of God, it's a lie. Jesus Christ is sitting in heaven at the right hand of the Father. All right, now let's take our Bibles and go to Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Rom I'm sorry, Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Romans chapter 8. Verse 34. And let's see what it says. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Alright. This is what it says. Roman 8, Romans 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ that died? Yea, rather, that risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make it intercession for us. All right, let's go back and look at verse 34 again. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who has maketh, who also maketh intercession for us. All right, so we see that Jesus Christ has died, and he has risen again. Not only did he die, but he rose again. The Bible says here, in verse 34, he has risen again, who is even at the right hand of God. He has risen, he died, he has risen again, and he's at the right hand of God, and he's making intercession for us. He's going on our behalf, all right? He's making intercession for us. This is one of the things that Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of God and doing for we as children of God. All right, now let's go to Mark 16 and 19. St. Mark 16 at 19 and see what it says and we're asking the question is there a son of God in heaven is there a son of God in heaven and we already see that there is a son of God in heaven despite what the false teachers and the false prophets are preaching all right uh, St. Mark 16 and 19 and this is what it says so then after the Lord has spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. All right, so we see in verse 19 uh, that the Lord has spoken uh, those words when he said, uh, the, uh, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Uh, shall they uh, cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. Jesus was the first one to talk about the new tongues. All right, in the New Testament. He said, In my name uh, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And verse 19, So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. So we see that Jesus Christ, according to many scriptures in the Bible, was received up into heaven or ascended to heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God, meaning for the most part, that he has a place of honor and status, all right? And it, it affirms that Jesus has equal status with God the Father within the Godhead, all right? And as we explain to you that the Godhead is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one God, all right? 
So all of you out here that are lying on, on, on Christians who say that uh, we believe in uh, the Godhead or we believe uh, in uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you are lying on us and saying that we have three gods or we say that we have three gods. Uh, we do not teach uh, that we have three gods. We teach that God is one. There is only one God. But that one God is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right? And we do not teach and believe that God the Father, that's a lie and a trick of the devil. All right? That's false teaching that the only somebody that is sitting in heaven is God the Father. God the Father is in heaven, but also Jesus the Son is in heaven on the right hand of God. Let's understand that. All right? Now, uh, we, we uh, mentioned to you on the other on last night that we were going to take a look at some of the scriptures on the Godhead. So let's take our Bibles and go to Acts 17, verse 29. <clears throat> let's turn our Bibles to Acts 17, chapter the 29th verse, and it's going to tell us about the Godhead. All right? Everything that we teach and preach, we have scripture for it. And we certainly know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Let's understand that. So that's Acts 17, verse 29. Acts 17, verse 29, and this is what it says. For as much then as we are the offsprings of God, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. All right, let's take a look at verse 29 again. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. All right. So the, the Godhead is, 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 is not uh, like gold and silver or stone. All right. We, it shouldn't be compared. We ought not to think that, it's, that the Godhead is, is, is like that. Let's understand that. Uh, the Godhead has nothing to do with those things or man's device. It is God himself. Let's understand that the Godhead is God himself. Let's understand that. The Holy Ghost is 100% God. Let's understand that. The Holy Ghost is God. Jesus is God. And God the Father is God. Now, let's go to another verse in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 20, and we're looking at some scriptures that support the Godhead, the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. And that's found in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. All right, and this is what it says. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead. So they are without excuse. All right, let's look at that scripture again. Uh, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly, th are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. All right, so we see that the Bible talks of the Godhead right here in Romans 1 and 20. Now, our last scripture we have supporting the Godhead is found in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go to, to uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, and take a look at the last scripture on the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We do not believe uh, in oneness like that. We do not believe that God is that Jesus is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We do not believe that that is false teaching. And the Bible doesn't teach that. Jesus is not God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Jesus is God the Son. All right? He, he is a member of the Godhead. Let's understand that. All right? Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. This is what it says. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right. For in him, for in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right. That means that Jesus has 
all of the Godhead in him. Let's understand that. And all of the Godhead is in the God the Father. And all of the Godhead is in God the Son. And just because we say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, does not mean we're saying three gods. We're saying that God the Father is God, not a God, but He is God. See, there's only one God. God the Father is God. God the Son is God. And God the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is God. God the Father is not a God. God the Son is not a God. God the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is not a God. Let's understand that, people. We only have one God. And so all of you out there are teaching and saying, well, let me use this word this time. Well, those Trinitarians, they have three gods. You're just a lie. You're just a liar. We never said we had three gods. The Bible doesn't teach three gods. It said these three are one. And the problem with you, one, is, folks, you don't want to... You don't want to recognize these three that the Bible says. You want to make these three one who is Jesus Christ or God the Father. But it doesn't say that. All right, let's understand that. Now, we're going to stop right there. We're going to come back and we're going to pick up from there. We'll be right back. God bless you. Bye-bye.